A bunch of people crap on the Apple Card. Even though the Apple Card might not be special in terms of churning or gaming the system, it's special in other ways and in my opinion from using the Apple Card for two years, the superior option in terms of the everyday credit card for most people. And I'll be telling you why. Also I'm going to leave chapters in this video so skip around if that's what you're into. First let me go over the cash back you'll get for purchases you make with the Apple Card. At select retailers, it's only a couple of places like 9 but more like 6 because 3 of those retailers are the same company, you'll be getting 3% immediate cash back. Those retailers include Duane Reed and Walgreens, which are the same, Mobile and Exxon, also the same, Uber and Uber Eats, same, and at Panera Bread, Nike, and T-Mobile. It's not a great list, but better than nothing. You just happen to get more money back at these places. And of course, this is an Apple card. You'll also get 3% immediate cash back at Apple stores, along with the special bonus of being able to finance some items at Apple. But I'll go more in depth about that in a bit. You also get unlimited 2% immediate cash back. But there's a catch. You'll get the 2% cash back only through using the Apple Card through Apple Pay. And yeah, I know it's annoying, but from my real world experience, most places have an Apple Pay option. And for the places that don't have Apple Pay, you'll still get back 1% cash back, which again is better than nothing. You'll even get a snazzy metal titanium card that you can use to show off and as a ninja star if that's what you're into. I mean, just listen to this sound. Just know the white outer layer gets heavily dirtied and damaged. But you could always request a new card in the app when the card gets into that bad of shape. Now some churning credit card masters absolutely hate this. A lot of competitive credit cards on the market offer 2% unlimited cash back whether you use Apple Pay or the physical card. And that isn't wrong, I would love an all 2% cash back card, but I believe getting the Apple card is worth the trade off for the ease of features the Apple card has. Like for example if you've been noticing, I kept saying immediate cash back. You don't have to wait a month before you can get your rewards or for the cash back to be limited to a $25 minimum withdrawal like some other credit cards. With the Apple card, it's your rewards, your money. You can have it as soon as the transaction has been posted. The cash back won't be Amazon Prime to you or anything, but instead be deposited into your Apple Cash card, which then you can deposit the Apple Cash into your bank account or savings account or whatever. Another feature is the circle wheel of interest. If someone's going to leave a balance on their card, they might as well know how screwed they're going to be instead of being screwed when they actually receive the fee on their statement, right? With the circle wheel of interest, you can actually decide how screwed you want to be. The less to the left of the circle means you'll end up paying a higher interest fee. And the more to the left, the less of a fee you'll have to pay, if any at all. Never leave a balance on any credit card if you can help it. It's not worth it. Also, the Apple card has this feature to keep track of your spending, especially Especially if you spend only with the Apple Card. Not so useful if you use multiple different cards to pay for stuff, but basically this feature will automatically categorize everything. And it can show you how much money you spent this week, month, and year. And which of those days, weeks, or months you spent the most in an easy to read bar graph format. In those bars, they will have a color to them, which will show the portion of category spent, like dining, entertainment, shopping, and transportation. This makes it easy to see how your financial health is, whether you spend too much in a certain category and should limit that spending, like going out to eat too much. Another convenient feature of the Apple Card is text live chat. Many credit card companies today, like Citi, Amex, and Chase, have this kind of feature. But Apple does it the best. To get into the live text chat, you just need to go into your settings, then click message, and then just type in whatever you need help with. And the best benefit of doing it this way is you can answer back at any time, like texting someone. The issue with the other banks is you have to keep the web page open or you have to answer back immediately or the chat will end or disconnect. Text live chat isn't a major advantage to get the Apple card but it just makes the whole experience just nicer. Speaking of making experiences nicer, the two new features since two years ago when the Apple card first released is virtual card numbers and the Apple card family. While the virtual numbers isn't a new feature, there is a really small update to it. So as you know, the physical Apple Card doesn't actually have any numbers on it. It's completely blank. Instead, it has virtual numbers. You have to go to the wallet app, tap on the card number icon, and then open it using your face ID or fingerprint ID. Only then can you get the physical numbers. This is nice because you don't have to worry about your Apple Card numbers being stolen by someone writing it down when they take your card away. But the new feature that was added is the three digit security code on the Apple Card that changes consistently. So even if someone somehow got your your Apple card, the security code might have already changed. 
Like I said, this feature makes the experience nicer, but it's not all that necessary in my opinion. It's a credit card. If someone makes a fraudulent charge, all you have to do is report it and the charges will be removed off your statement and you'll get a new card or card numbers. Then the second new feature is Apple Card Family, which is actually pretty useful. There are two types of family users. First is co-owners, which means two people apply for the Apple Card and then they can merge their accounts together and share their credit limits as one. So for example, if one person has a credit limit of $1,000 and the second person has a credit limit of $5,000. As co-owners, both people have access to a $6,000 credit limit. Both people will still be responsible for paying off the total balance, but this is a great way to increase spending power and maybe even increase someone's credit scores. The second option is participants, which are basically authorized users, just like any normal credit card. Participants can be 13 years old or older and being over 18 years old helps their credit scores. Every Everyone will share the same credit limits as the main users so no increase in credit limit. However, a difference compared to traditional credit card authorized users, the main user won't be receiving all the cash back. Whoever made the purchase using the Apple Card will be receiving the cash back. And this is also true with being co-owners too. Everyone gets their own cash back. Now I'll talk about more in depth about the Apple Card financing that I mentioned earlier in this video. So you know when you don't have the money at the moment to put down on expensive purchase, so you finance it through a buy now pay later plan, something like a firm, or might open a credit card to finance a purchase like on the Best Buy credit card. But there are issues with these options. With a firm, you have to pay the extra fees on top of your purchase. While the Best Buy credit card does have options for people to finance purchases with 0% interest, it won't give you any cash back which sucks. But the Apple Card is different. You can choose to finance interest-free select items at Apple like an iPhone, Apple Watch, AirPods, or even an Apple Watch band if that's what you're into, and still get the immediate 3% cash back. So if you wanted to, you could actually use the cash back to help pay down the item you just financed. The only two drawbacks from my knowledge is you can only finance select items at Apple and you can't choose your financing terms, like the months you have to pay the stuff back. Like an Apple Watch, you can take up to 24 months to pay that back, but for a Mac, you can only get up to 12 months even though a Mac is way more expensive than an Apple Watch. And while we're talking about interest and fees, there are no made up fees with the Apple Card. The only thing you would need to pay if you got the Apple Card is the interest if you don't pay down your statement balance. So that means no late fees, foreign transaction fees, or over the limit fees. You can basically use this card wherever MasterCard and Apple Pay is accepted and not worry about some silly fees. Oh yeah, and no annual fees, which is pretty rare on a metal card. Some of those metal credit cards annual fees can get extremely stream, but sometimes they are definitely worth paying for some of them. So great, maybe after hearing all the benefits the Apple Card feels like a right fit for you. But it would just be a little bit sweeter if there was a welcome bonus just to nudge you over the edge. So there isn't a welcome bonus as of the time I am writing this video. However, if you're okay with waiting a while, or maybe even forever, who knows, sometimes the Apple Card does have welcome bonuses. Like for example, not too long ago, the Apple Card was offering $75 back on Nike purchases. Which isn't the best welcome bonus, but pretty decent on a no spend requirement and a no annual fee card. Okay, well maybe you want to apply for the Apple Card anyways, or maybe you did receive a pretty decent welcome bonus, then congrats to you. What does the application process look like? The Apple Card actually has one of the best application experiences. Basically everything is transparent. The Apple Card website tells you they pull from your credit score from TransUnion from the FICO 9 score, and if that credit score is above 660, the chances of being approved for the Apple Card are quite good. But let's say you don't get approved. Doesn't even matter because the Apple Card will only do a soft pull on your credit score, so no damage done. However, if you do get approved and agree to get the Apple Card, they will do a hard pull on your credit. Even better, if you do end up getting rejected for the Apple Card, there's still a chance that you could be invited to the Path of Approval program. This program will tell you what you could do to increase your chances of getting the Apple Card and all you have to do is follow what they tell you. Then the next time you apply for the Apple Card, you'll have a greater chance of approval. Now that we went over all the benefits of the Apple Card, what do I personally think of the Apple Card? Is it worth getting or is it a pass? Well, in my opinion, the Apple Card is definitely not a credit card for people who want to maximize points all the time. But at the same time, I strongly believe the Apple Card wasn't made for those people. In my experience from my friends who have the Apple Card, the Apple Card is for 
beginners to credit cards. Like if the Apple card didn't exist, my friends would use their debit cards on everything and think credit cards are just the devil. Without the Apple card option, some people wouldn't even make 1% back on their purchases. So any other cash back they'll earn is just extra. I personally keep the Apple card for the 3% back on Apple purchases plus the monthly installments. That way I can invest in equipment that could make me more money in the future. Like getting the M1 MacBook Pro laptops, thereby saving time and making more money. Plus the 3% back on top of the monthly installments is a really nice bonus. But that is my opinion and experience since holding the Apple card for 2 years. I hope this video helped you out and I'll see you later.